Hi guys, it's Miss Claudia. I wanted to share a couple of lessons with you about Easter um, just to help make sure you're staying in the Word, reading your Bibles and studying them and learning more about God. So um, today I'm going to share about Jesus's entrance into um, Jerusalem. And so if you have your Bible, you can open it to Matthew chapter 21. Um, and a lot of what I will be sharing is um, from Matthew 21, verse 1, to chapter 23, verse 39. So that's a lot to read. I think you have a lot of time to read it. So feel free to read it. I'll leave that in the notes, and you can look up um, throughout the week. I'm just going to kind of share an outline in small verses from that section. And so Jesus enters Jerusalem as the king. Now, when you think of a king, you might think of um, a big, nice crown, fancy clothes, lots of jewelry, um, however you think of a king. But then, um, when we hear about how Jesus entered Jerusalem as king, we might not think king at first, right? It says in chapter 21, verse... Um, Five through um, eight, it says, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to them and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches. Um, others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. Right? So if you think of a donkey and you think of a king, I wouldn't think of a king coming in a donkey, right? Maybe we think of a fancy carriage or a nice horse. Maybe a horse is even a little bit nicer than a donkey. <laughs> when I made my picture of a donkey, I thought of um, Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. And if you've watched Winnie the Pooh and know um, Eeyore, he's kind of a sad little character. And then to think about that, um, Jesus came on a donkey. And so that's just one example of how he came as a humble king. So um, he is the promised king. It tells us that here in these verses, right? Um, and, uh, and is the promised son of David, right? It says that in verse, um, in verse 9, praise God for the son of David. And so Jesus is the rightful king. Um, but if you continue reading in verse 12, it says, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, the scriptures declare my temple will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. And so if you keep reading in these um, next few verses, it says, um, it, will, it shows us how Jesus displayed his authority by driving out the money changers of the temple, right? He was able to get rid of them and make it back, restore it to a place of worship, rightful worship. Um, and he refused to explain his authority to the rebellious priests and elders. Um, if you keep reading, um, it says... Um, that the in chapter 21 verse 23 when Jesus returned to the temple and began teaching the leading priests and elders came to him and they demanded by what authority are you doing all these things who gave you the right and so you would think that these religious leaders would honor Jesus right if that's where they're preparing the way but it wasn't like that um, and so I have a little picture kind of to show you that too. We have a nicely wrapped little gift here, right? And so the outside, right, it looks like a, a gift. 
you would want to open it, right, and find out what's inside. If I took this much time to wrap this gift, you would, there should be something nice and thoughtful in there too, right? But this is an example of these religious leaders. They were all fancy on the outside, saying the right things. Um, but if we look inside, we might not find good things, right? Um, and so in my box, I have a empty Gator Gatorade bottle, which will not serve me any good, right? I don't have anything. It won't help me if I'm thirsty. It's not a good present. <laughs> and I have an empty roll. Also, surely not going to do me any good in these times. Um, and so when I open this gift, that's not what you would expect to find. You might find this stuff maybe more so in the trash can, but not in a nicely wrapped gift. But this is just an example of what it was, um, what the Pharisees were like. They were nice on the outside, fancy, said the right things. Um, but on the inside, it was uh, filthy and worthless and not honoring to God at all. Um, so you can think of that example. Um, when you think of these religious leaders, they just were saying the right things, but they weren't doing the right things. And so um, it continues, and um, Jesus proved his authority in his understanding of the scriptures. Um, and that's found later in um, chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. And I'm going to share this part because it's probably my favorite. Um, they're trying to trap Jesus. Um, so if you want to follow along with me, it's now in cha Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. It says, Then the Pharisees met together to plot how to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. They sent some of their disciples along with the supporters of Herod to meet with him. Teacher, they said, we know how honest you are. You teach the way of God truthfully. You are impartial and don't play favorites. Now tell us, what do you think about this? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus knew their evil motives, right? Jesus knows our hearts. You hypocrites, he said. You were trying to trap me. Why are you trying to trap me? Here, show me the coin used for the tax. When they handed him a Roman coin, he asked, whose picture and title are stamped on it? Caesar's. They replied, well then, he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. His reply amazed them and they went away. Right? And so um, that shows us two things, right? Jesus knows our hearts and, um, and it's important to know the scriptures and what God's word um, tells us. And so it continues on in chapter 23 that Jesus is the rejected king. He showed the hypocrisy of the religious leaders, and hypocrisy is just a fancy word for um, this pretending, right? Like they pretended to look all nice and pretty, but on the inside was just a bunch of trash, right? Um, he rebuked them for their rejection of him, and he described the quantity consequences of that generation's rejection. And so we'll um, maybe read a little bit of that. It said, it's, now we're in Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. So um, he's telling them there, right? So we want to be able to read the Bible for what it says and do what it says, not just to read it and pretend or read it and ignore it even. If we read it and we're still 
um, not loving our family, not loving our brothers and sisters during this time, especially, right? It's not what Jesus asks of us. Um, and so, uh, so there will be punishment for that. And so as a little craft, if you're at home, because I love crafts, it's my favorite, um, to remind us of this lesson and him coming in as king, though he was a humble king who came in on a donkey, um, you can make a crown. And you can make a crown however, um, however you want. You can make it so that it wraps around. We've done that lots of times for different crafts um, at church. Or you can simply cut one out of paper um, and color it or use colored paper. I used a yellow piece of construction paper and just cut out a crown, right? And um, maybe on here it probably would be a good idea to write the um, our key verse. And so our key verse is back um, to Matthew chapter 21, verse 5. Um, and if you're uh, maybe don't can't write the whole verse, um, I would write our truth that we learned about today. And the truth is that Jesus is king. Um, maybe because it's not how you would think um, of a king. Um, it's just will serve as a reminder that he is king. Um, and so you can just write Jesus is king on here. Or you can write the full verse from Matthew chapter 21 verse 5. So I'm going to go ahead and write, Jesus is king. And I'll leave it up here. So if you need help spelling it, if you want to figure out how to write it, we'll see if that shows up. Oh, maybe I need a darker pen. I'll go ahead and use a marker. Jesus is King. And so now that we've finished our lesson, um, I would maybe yell that as loud as you can, as long as no babies are sleeping, because you want to keep the babies asleep. Let, yell it as loud as you can and let your parents know what you've learned today that Jesus is King. And our verse is from Matthew 21. Verse 5. There we go. Now you can see that. And so um, if you do this and if you send me a picture of your work or you bring your work when we get to go back to church, you'll get um, $3 for the kids store um, when we return back to Thrive. So each craft that you complete, each lesson that you complete um, is going to earn you $3 to the store. So, hope that serves as your reminder. Um, hope you yelled it nice and loud and didn't wake up any babies. Um, that Jesus is king. And so that's what we're going to get to celebrate this week. And Easter can't be canceled. It's such a fun celebration. So find your creative ways to celebrate at home um, doing these small little things. Love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.